I'm Katie Kempner and welcome to Perspectives. We're here at TED Women doing a bunch of interviews with some phenomenal women. And right now I'm very excited to have Sukinder Singh Cassidy here with me. Welcome. Thank you. You have had a really interesting career where you've been able to blend a lot of different passions of yours. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, first of all, one of my first passions is just building companies. And I think I've always been lucky uh, first of all, to have a very entrepreneurial family. My parents were both uh, doctors, but my father loved running his medical practice. So when I was young, he was always like, you should work for yourself. And for a long time, I thought I would work in a big company, but really I came all the way back to sort of starting my first company in Silicon Valley in 1997 and found that I just loved the idea of building momentum for something and kind of iterating on something and making and turning something, nothing into something. Um, and then when I was at Google, I got to do the same thing. I got to build many different businesses, local and maps and shopping and then we built sort of 18 different countries at once from China to Brazil. Wow. Um, and then I was CEO of a company called Polyvore again. Um, and then I started my second company, Joyous. And so I think my first passion is, is sort of building companies. And I think I've been able to do that at, even at Google, right? Large and small companies, I've always been able to sort of incubate and build things. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, as you pointed out, I mean, Joyous is really um, blending my passion for um, technology and certainly for building an entrepreneurship with another love, which is sort of delighting women, you know, and making women feel more beautiful. Let's talk a little bit about Joyous because mm -hmm. I just discovered it and I love it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so obviously Joyous is what we think of as sort of a very premium um, content and commerce experience, really blending this idea that we can be able to bring beautiful products that help you live a better life fashion, beauty, health and wellness, these are all products we focus on. And we tell you the stories of the product through video and really help women, as we said, both feel entertained and shop. You know, I'm a avid shopper, um, but I'm a shopper that even if I don't buy something, the act of it makes me feel good. It's something for myself, you know, and the idea of making women feel sort of entertained, educated, delighted, mm -hmm. inspired. It felt like, you know, if it was a life's work, that would be a pretty good one. Well, one of the reasons that I really the main reason that I did Perspectives is that I'm always looking at a different angle of trying to help women live mm -hmm. beautifully, mm -hmm. which is tr trying to help them figure out how to live a balanced life. And mm -hmm. some women hate the word balance, I've mm -hmm. found. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of aspire to it. I like that word. To mm -hmm. me, it feels very peaceful. Mm -hmm. But it's all about finding a way to live where all the different aspects of your life are working together. You have a family, you have children, you have a huge career. Mm -hmm. How do you balance everything and live your own version of living beautifully? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. So first of all, um, I'll say, so I'm terrible at balance if you were to measure it on a day or a month. And I say that because I'm somebody who believes that to be great at anything, you have to give it your all, including work, right? Mm -hmm. And at a certain level of responsibility, the sacrifices that you need to make just increase. And that doesn't go away. There's only so many hours in a day. But I always believe that sort of your life is cyclical. And if and I aspire to live a life that is balanced over the course of years and a lifetime. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that, there have been periods where it's all about work, you know, and I really have to just manage the guilt and the sacrifices at home and say to my husband and my children, I'm not gonna be, you know, I'm not gonna be able to be here, you know. And there have been times I've said to work, you know, certainly when I was at Google and traveling, crazy amounts. There was one point at which I moved my children and my nanny and myself to Hong Kong because we needed uh, staff China. And I left my husband and my son behind for three months. And when that period was done, then I said to everybody at work, I'm like, I was just in China for three months. Guess what? I know I run international. I'm not traveling all summer. Like, not doing it. I've got two months where I need to be at home. So you know, you're always juggling this set of priorities. So I don't believe in balance in the sense of having this perfect day, you know, where I wake up at six and I work out for an hour, you know, and then I spend, 30 minutes with my children, and then I have time to blow dry my hair, and I look amazing, and I go to work, and I have a highly productive day. No, I don't believe in that. I, it doesn't work for me. Um, and I think it's very hard to measure balance that way. Mm -hmm. But I do think that over the course of my life, there are going to be periods that were entirely about my career, periods that were about my children, periods that were about sort of, you know, juggling priorities. And over the course of my life, I hope that in all of those spheres, I achieve something. And to achieve something in one area does take sacrifice to the other. I don't think it's very hard to be great at five things simultaneously. That's a terrific way of looking at it. And of all the people I've interviewed, that's the first time I heard it said quite like that. But I think that's really insightful that not necessarily every moment of the day, mm -hmm. but an overall balance yeah. is... And, and just, and, but I think you're always negotiating. Yeah. You know, I think you're always, you're always disappointing someone. This is what I've learned. I say that women have to be very good at managing guilt and giving yourself a break. How do you keep that guilt at bay? 
Um, well, I feel guilt is just as guilty as the next person, but I think at, at this point in my life, I'm sort of, I guess, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I kind of Hey, just we like, just found out we're the same yeah, age. Don't say that. that. <laughs> but um, I guess I'm just sort of at peace with the fact that I'm not perfect, and, um, and I'm lucky that I have great infrastructure and support, my husband, my nanny, great employees. Um, but, you know, I, I guess it's not that I keep it at bay. I guess I just, you know, I feel guilty and I realize that that's natural. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, I kind of just think I can do the best I could do. And maybe I'm just more comfortable with being vastly imperfect at, you know, at 43 than I was at 23. Which I think is a good thing, yeah. Well, yeah, actually. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you just, you do the best you can, right? Yeah. You, yeah. So I started following you on Twitter today. <laughs> And I noticed that in your little uh -huh. profile, yeah. you say that one of the things you're passionate about is helping women succeed. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So first of all, of course, I actually believe Joyous is part of that. I mean, when I think about Joyous's alignment with my kind of personal mission, I think helping women feel beautiful, live beautifully inside and out. I actually think that is my contribution in some ways to helping women feel successful. But of course, aside from Joyous, I try and give back time into the technology community, into the leadership community, into the entrepreneurship community. Um, you know, I certainly uh, work with organizations like Women 2.0. But you know, when I think about where I want to mentor or spend my time, certainly I'm an investor in a lot of women-led startups, you know, because I feel like if I can give back to women, it is, it is more meaningful for me mm -hmm. in the sense that I understand how hard it is to make it all work. I mean, there is no doubt that women have a lot more on their plate to juggle yeah. at this stage than men do, you know? And, and that's not imposed by men by anyone. I mean, I want to be a great mother, not because my husband tells me to, but because, you know, I feel that way, right? Yeah. So it's not an imposition, you know, it's who we are. We're these jugglers and multitaskers. And if I can understand that uniquely and share kind of my perspectives or whatever energy I have with other women, it's just personally fulfilling. So for women that are starting companies, do you think it's important to have a plan to sort of say, okay, I want to do things this way? Mm -hmm. Or do you think, you know, I want to have my kids now, or I want to plan this out. I was reading that book, Wonder Women. Have you mm -hmm. read that book? I haven't yet. yet. No. And, it, and it talks about, you know, really f trying to figure out a plan for yourself. Or do you think that's not really so realistic and you just sort of go along and see see what's going to happen? You know, I, so I think it's a little bit of both. I think the notion, whether it's your career or your personal life, that so you have an overall sense of where you directionally want to go. I do actually believe that one day you'll find yourself getting there. Oprah has a vision board, right? We all talk about, you know, I look at something I wrote at a McKinsey women's leadership offsite I was at three years ago and actually kind of five years ago and actually I'm kind of living that life. I did start a company that was about technology and, and shopping. I did actually become a CEO. These were all things I dreamed about when I was at Google. So, so I think there's something to having a general vision but being maybe open to the possibility of how it unfolds. I think there can be as much preparation as you want but it's often it's good fortune and good luck and good yeah. timing combined with preparation. I mean all the jobs I've had, they, none of them were preordained, you know? I mean I didn't know I was going to end up at Google running international. I joined to run local. I never thought I would stay for six years, you know? I. When I started Yodely, it was because the founders of kind of the company I was at previously that sold to Amazon thought I did a good job and became investors in a new company and had four engineers looking for a business partner. I didn't know that my opportunity to start the first company would be a financial software company with four engineers. I mean, who knew, right? And then on the whole kind of having children and when to have children, all those things, I mean, you know, I'm, I mean, Cheryl, Cheryl Sandberg's a good friend, and uh, we were colleagues at Google, and I did, I'm definitely in the school of thought that Cheryl is, too. You don't know when you're going to have children, you know, so don't put your career on hold. I mean, trust me, it's not like I was staving off men when I was 30 saying, like, I just can't get married to you because, you know what, my career is too wonderful. I didn't meet, you know, my husband until I was 33, and I got married at 34. But the advantage is, you know, I wasn't hanging around waiting for that to happen. I was just doing my thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and by the time I had children, I was in a position of relative power at Google. And yeah. that let me negotiate my choices. It let me say to my boss and Eric Schmidt, hey, I'd like my nanny and my daughter to travel around with me on your dime, you know, as I kind of run this half of the world. What about somebody who isn't as successful as you and they're not negotiating with Eric Schmidt on whether mm -hmm. they can bring their kids certain places? Should they be able to feel empowered to ask for things too? Absolutely. I mean, I, I would say that, trust me, I mean, it's not about if you're negotiating with somebody powerful or not. I think it's about owning your own sense of power, mm -hmm. right? And I would just say to you that your ability to negotiate professionally increases 
with your value to an organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's quite frankly, just straight up business. So I guess my point is, yes, I think you have the ability to negotiate whatever your level, but I think negotiation comes first from a great contribution, mm -hmm. from a recognition of your worth, and from uh, quite frankly, doing great work. And you've yeah. got to put yourself in the position where people want to make you happy, you know? Yeah. And you need to ask for what you need in order for you to be happy, for sure. Yeah, no, that's a great point. So I just want to end sort of building on that. Sure. Which, which is for somebody who's starting out or mm -hmm. looking to change careers or somewhere in their career, what is one piece of advice that has helped guide you that you mm -hmm. could share with us? I think the advice I sometimes give younger people, men or women, is, you know, I know it doesn't seem that way, but you've got to trust it all works out, which is a crazy thing to say. Um, but I sort of say anchor yourself in the early parts of your career. Almost forget about industry, forget about even the role. Ink yourself in doing kind of a great body of work for somebody mm -hmm. great. And it almost doesn't matter what you do, you're going to end up progressing. But number two, you actually want to work for people who can teach you something, right? And when you do great work for great people, they pull you along for the ride, trust me, you know, and opportunities start to unfold ahead of you, right? So my biggest advice is you got to trust it's all going to work out. And your mantra's got to be like, how do I surround myself with people who are amazing that I can learn from? And why do I put myself in a position to contribute greatly to them, mm -hmm. you know, or to their work, right? How do I do great work for great people? And I generally think, you know, if you kind of use that list, it's just in your career, it doesn't matter if you start in sales or finance, it doesn't matter if you start a big company or a small company, you're gonna make progress. That's great advice, thank you. All right. Thanks for spending time with us here at TED Women.